Secretary of Education, William Bennett, held the belief that the arts are crucial for learning. He stated that, like reading, writing, arithmetic, music, art, painting, dance, theater are all keys that unlock profound human understanding. This argument has existed within our society for decades. Many educators and government officials struggle to find the correct balance between the need for arts classes and the need for STEM. More often than not, though, STEM wins this battle, and with it, the funding. This topic has always been something very close to my heart. As a very rambunctious kid, the arts allowed me to express myself in ways that I didn't know possible. Since then, I've been able to take multiple psychology courses, which has allowed me to expand my knowledge on the subject. Arts education, or lack thereof, affects all of us. Not only is it vital for development in children, but it snowballs into how diversely we consider problems and innovate in our society. Today, I will be talking to you about why the arts are so important and so often overlooked, and then propose a possible solution to start integrating them back into our society. So first, let's talk about what the arts are. It's important for you to know that as I refer to the arts in this presentation, I'm not just talking about painting and drawing. While that is obviously part of it, the arts comprise a myriad of subjects, most of which are never explored in the academic realm. This includes theater. According to the Oklahoma Policy Institute's 2019 report, over 2,000 classes related to or involving theater have been cut from public schools in Oklahoma in the last two years, despite total enrollment increasing by 20,000. It also includes music and dance. According to Jennings' 2019 dissertation, there are 1.3 million elementary age students in our school systems that don't have access to a music class, and that number is nearly triple for dance. It also, of course, includes art. While this subject is a little bit harder to approximate because of art's wide variety of subject matter, Jennings estimates that 5 to 7 percent of all arts classes have been cut from public schools since 2016. The funding for these subjects is often given to STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. According to Dwyer's 2011 Reinvesting in Arts Education, it's explained that STEM is seen as more important because it's less subjective. You can't look at a painting or watch a play and say, yes, that's right, or no, that's wrong. While with math and science, there's usually a correct or incorrect answer. In Bowen and Kisida's report for the Houston Art Access Initiative, it's explained that this outcome-based style of evaluation is most commonly used in our education system, and it's further enforced by standardized testing, which we rely on heavily to determine intelligence. In reality, though, the arts are necessary for cognitive development and academic success, especially in primary schooling. Riff writes in his 2019 dissertation that experience and training in the arts can actually increase skills related to STEM subjects. And Valdicino's 2013 journal for education and philosophy agrees, stating that adults who took music classes at a young age can actually process sounds and voice patterns faster than those who didn't, even if those that had taken the music classes hadn't interacted with an instrument in decades. It's also stated that those who take arts classes demonstrate a higher aptitude for problem solving, which is a valuable skill in math and science. Finally, those taking arts classes, can, it allows children to develop creativity skills, which facilitates such a diverse discourse when faced with a problem. Not only do the arts help with STEM, though, they are necessary and vital for cognitive development. In Kolachek's 2019 journal, it's reported that we have two basic parts of our brain. The left brain is built by math and science, and it's responsible for problem solving, logical thinking, reasoning. The arts help us to build the right brain, which allow us holistic thought, creativity, empathy, intuition. Now, while these skills are not typically associated with the STEM subjects, they are incredibly important in day-to-day -day life especially with communication, a skill I know we all value very deeply. Finally, Jennings reports that the arts allow children to better express themselves and engage with their environments. If a student takes an art class, not only are they more likely to be more involved in classwork, but they're more likely to feel connected to their school and their peers. So the benefits of the arts are there. Now the question is, how do we begin assimilating it back into the curriculum? 
I believe to do this, we should move from a STEM-centered model to a STEAM-centered model, the A, standing for the arts. This would keep STEM classes the way we have them now, but again, assimilating and acknowledging the importance of the coexistence of the arts. Before I get into this, it's important for me to concede that Jennings reports that approximately 80% of all school districts have had cut funding since 2008. This is an astronomical number and can make it insanely difficult for every educator to give money to every deserving subject. Still, even though STEM received this money, it's important to note that approximately $3 billion in grants is given to STEM every year by the government. The arts receives $30 million, literally 100 times less. The STEM budget that we have given, to, given by the government is also higher than what other countries like Finland and China receive. And those countries already outrank us in math and science. In Quigley's 2019 report for STEAM education, it's explained that the best option for more arts classes is obviously more money. For most schools, though, this isn't an option. So, the next best thing to do is to begin incorporating the arts into STEM classes that already exist. For example, in math classes, drawing shapes and shading can be used to demonstrate geometry and depth. And in science classes, string instruments like a violin can, use, can be used to show how sounds travel through the air with vibrations. Finally, Jennings states that outreach programs are often a huge help in facilitating arts learning. Whether this be in the form of an assembly or an after-school program, volunteers who come in and give their time to talk about the arts often will pique a child's interest enough that should they have the means, they will go and explore the arts outside of school. These are just a few of the many solutions educators have collaborated over four years. In reality, though, the most important step to ensuring arts exposure to the next generation is to acknowledge its importance at a personal level. There can be a world where children are allowed and able to explore their interests in a variety of subjects. Imagine 15 years from now. A child comes home from school excited to talk about all the things that they learned. They talk about how in their music class they learned a new song on the piano, and then in their science class, they in their classmates wrote a play about the water cycle, and they got to play the part of the sun. And finally, in math, they learned a song to help them memorize the multiplication tables, something I'm sure would have been helpful for a lot of us. When this child grows up, they will not only have the background in STEM that allows them to problem solve and critically think, but they will have a background in the arts that allows them to build on these skills and innovate and create. It's only with the juxtaposition of these two that we can truly move forward as a society. They go hand in hand, so why shouldn't they be taught that way? It is imperative that children have the resources to explore the world around them. Life isn't just math, science, and technology, and while those skills are vital, an even and healthy exposure to more creative subjects is necessary for proper development and future innovation. At the forefront of the next generation, it is up to us to ensure that future generations have that ability to explore. Without allowing students to become culturally literate in music, art, theater, and dance, we are not only doing a disservice to them, but we are doing a disservice to ourselves and our society as a whole. The ethical solution is to begin incorporating the arts and valuing them as much as we do STEM. Because while STEM is the basis of our society, the arts are what allow us to understand each other and the world at a deeper and more substantial level. Their coexistence has allowed us to evolve for centuries. Now, it is up to us to ensure that they can continue to coexist. Thank you.